Welcome to the Garlic Marketing Show. Today, we're going to be talking EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System, how to use it and how to use it in conjunction with your marketing. I've got a great implementer on who's going to talk about how she grew her health and fitness business and how she's helping to grow other EOS businesses. Uh, but of course, before we get started with Andrea Jones, our uh, podcast is brought to you by Story Cruise. It's the ultimate resource for finding videographers that know business. Used by many running EOS, including Gio Wickman. It's the most powerful place to start. And it, the per, best place to start is by using your video case stories. The team at Story Cruise can help you find those stories, craft powerful videos, and deliver them at the perfect time. Supercharge your marketing. Just go to storycruise.com slash EOS to start. All right, Andrea Jones, thank you for being here. I'm excited to talk to you today about your journey in EOS. Thanks, Ian. And hello, listeners. <laughs> and Andrea, um, let's get a little into your background first, because I think it's really interesting. I, I, you know, I think EOS for all of you that aren't, let's talk a little bit about what EOS is and then how you got into it in case you don't know what EOS is. Sure. Absolutely. Um, well, EOS is really just a practical method of helping small and medium sized businesses get more of what they want from their business. And, and it, it, yeah, and it's a very systematized method. Um, and how did you encounter it first and how did you start Im implementing it? Well, I first came across the book Traction by Gino Wickman. Um, hadn't met the lovely, amazing genius of a man yet, but I picked up the book. We started um, toying with the idea of starting a second business, having had a few CrossFit affiliates in the Twin Cities. We had four locations in St. Paul, Minneapolis, St. Louis Park, um, and another one, North Loop uh, area. So when we started this new concept called Alchemy 365, wanting to branch out, have our own thing, it's a yoga strength and conditioning boutique studio. Certainly had a passion for fitness, passion for programming, um, one of the co-founders had a, a business degree from Georgetown. He got his MBA there. I had a, a solid slate of clients from CrossFit, and I had that sales and marketing engine behind me. I have a knack and love and passion for it. But um, like any entrepreneur, that's not everything, right? So as we grow, we, of course, encountered issue after issue, right? Uh, the difference between leading and managing and where are we headed? Like, what do we want to do? And are we, you know, what's the pace that we're going to set for ourselves? So um, we picked up the book, tried to self-implement pretty terribly. It's like the new year when you decide that you're going to go to the gym five times a week and cut bread out and never drink wine again. And that goes <laughs> out the window like a month later. So um, we found an EOS implementer, Justin Cox, a great guy that, um, really guided us and just helped us, held us accountable to it. So I'll use fitness analogies all day long. It's similar to when you start to work out and you actually find the thing that you like. Um, it's kind of best when somebody's walking you through it. So whether it's um, the Peloton or the YouTube videos that we're using now when we're doing workouts from home, or if you're able to go into a studio and have a trainer or a coach. Yeah. I mean, it, it's coaching is so, so important. And we, you know, we've been using EOS for a long time and it's difficult. It's not so much, it's complex. That's what I love about it. It's simple. That's, but it's not easy to implement. Where were your struggles in implementing it? I would say the struggles for us, um, as a, and, and any small business, you know, if you're less than 10, target market typically is 10 to 250 in size, but there was just five of us. So when we get to this, uh, one of the six key elements that we are hoping to strengthen when we are on the EOS journey is the people component, which is one of the most important ones, right? Because we can't control other humans as much as we'd like to. <laughs> so this idea of right people, uh, making sure that you have the people that fit your organization, um, that fit in, they're, they're like a glove. You just want to be around them. They're great. Making sure that it's the right person and also the right seat. Um, that was an issue for us because when you're small, of course, you want to hire um, the best of the best and your, you know, your revenue is small. And then as you're growing, like, well, how do you know what, if they're the right culture? So there's a little bit of 
um, trial and error along the way, but I really believe that as soon as you are open and honest with yourself and the people around you, that you can really attract the right people to your organization if you're holding fast to your core values and having these conversations with your team. And I want to get a little into core values, um, but you know, it is a marketing show. So I want to talk a little bit more about marketing and because you say you're great at sales and marketing. And I feel, you know, a lot of people think since I'm great at sales and marketing, I don't need systems to implement my sales and marketing. I can just go do it. Uh, do you find, did you find any difficulties with that? Cause I know I did. You know, it's like, oh, I have all these marketing sure. ideas and I, I, I'm like a, you know, chicken with my head cut off with them. Yeah. Um, well, I find, especially with Alchemy 365, I can have a lot of ideas for sure, but I also believe that consistency is really key. So when you have the message, um, one, it's expensive to retool it all the time. So if you find one that works, stick with it. If it's resonating with people, um, I had done a campaign um, at the beginning um, called Pursue Your Legend. Alchemy 365 came from um, The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. My dad is from Brazil. And um, in it, there's a quote about being able to pursue your personal legend. So that really resonated. I mean, I have, there's two members that ended up getting a tattoo, pursue your legend or PYL on their body. So if that's not like brand awareness recognition, <laughs> I don't know what is, but it's um, that consistency was really important. And also um, in EOS, one of the first foundational days that you do is build a marketing strategy with the leadership team. So once there's alignment on some key key things like your target market, your three uniques, um, what your proven process is with your clients, you can really hit the ground running. Like especially depending on what stage you are in your business, you can just go and run with it. So that was easy for me. The things that were, I would say that would come harder is I like to connect one-on-one -on -one with people, build relationships. Um, so the other things around, um, you know, my SEO and CRMs and, and the, the data behind it, which is a key component in EOS as well, that in strengthening it can really help drive um, accountability and metrics in your business. Um, that was a component that for me personally um, resonated and helped me stay on track. And uh, that, that's really cool how that works. And when you see, is that a common thing that you see in people implementing EOS is that they have problem. Are they usually good marketers or they're not doing any marketing or is there, they're just switching messages all the time? Where do you see the most common issues in the um, implementation I, of marketing? I was smiling because I thought you were reading my mind. One of the most common things <laughs> is um, not like thinking you know what your data is, but not actually knowing what your data is. <laughs> so looking at too many numbers, but maybe not the right numbers that are really giving you a absolute pulse on what's working in your business. Um, and then allowing other people, trusting other people to own those numbers to help move the needle. So you don't need to hold on to all the numbers, allowing other people um, to say, hey, at the end of the week, if I did you know, if I made X number of widgets or whatever it is, um, I know that that was successful. If I made this number of calls, if I brought this many people through the door, if, um, you know, I gave out X number of high fives in the class because they got their first pull up, whatever, then that's, that's a success. And that's, that's an, a metric that we can start to look at on a weekly basis. That's real. Yeah. High fives is a great metric. Yeah. <laughs> but that, it, one right now, but yeah. <laughs> um, and so when you're, you know, when did you realize that EOS was, was there a point where you're like, man, EOS really, really works. And, and what, is it a common aha moment? I would say the common for me personally, the thing that I, um, found that was working was, you know, we had one or two locations and then all of a sudden it's like, wow, we can have three or four or five or six. We're in a new market. We're in Denver. This is something that I can't believe um, we're doing as fast as we're doing because we had had a CrossFit business prior to that. And it was 
slow going, you know, um, we just didn't have a vision. So when you're setting a vision and that's where we're intending to go, it just made us all row in the direction that much faster. So it was, um, that was for me, but I think an aha moment that I commonly hear from clients is, um, if they can master their L10 meetings, which is a 90 minute meeting where they can really come together and hear, you know, are they staying on track with their rocks or their 90 day priorities in a quarter? Are they reviewing their data and scorecard? Are they um, listening to customer and employee headlines and giving core value shout outs? Um, and then really addressing the meaty issues that are holding them back. So if they can set these issues up and discuss them and get to a solve and make them go away forever, um, every time they remove these obstacles, they are that much faster. So a common thing I hear is what's working are L10s, like us meeting on a weekly basis for what seems like there's some resistance at first to meet for 90 minutes. It seems like that's a long time. I don't know for you, Ian, when you started, if that felt long for you. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> um, like I need to carve out 90 minutes in my whole day. But um, when you look at your whole week, uh, it's really it's nothing. And you guys can get moving and clear the path so much faster together as a team. T so th there's a part of the, the L10, well, in most of the meetings, called the segue. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is a funny story. And the person who's responsible for this probably won't listen to this podcast. So I'm going to say it, but they were reading it and it's just one of those words that you don't read that often. And they pronounce it. I, they're like, Oh, it's time to, I forget. Was it Sugui? We make fun of it now because it was just so mispronounced. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, fun, right? then you can say Sugui. Yeah. Now we say it. We're like, Oh, it's time to Sugui. But it, yeah. it, and so now that's part of our meaning, that's but awesome. it's and I agree with you, you know, you know, I think that the check-in, um, that segue is, um, I get so much from, from people when I hear what was your personal and professional best and, even in a recent session, um, someone said nothing. I have nothing. Um, and in a time right now when we're remote and uh -huh. um, you're, if, if you're not able to pick up on that and check in later, like, hey, are, are you okay? You know, um, I think that even, as, even though it doesn't seem like much, um, the segue or segui can be um, <laughs> really impactful. If you're listening. Oh, yeah. it, you know, we've actually implemented it on a daily basis that we, we in, in our Slack and everyone has to post their, you know, a win for the day. Okay. And because it's, it's so crucial. We get, we get separated now and, yeah. and it, it, you know, and it, get, it helps us all keep a pulse. And I can, you know, we can call people out for not doing it. And I, I, th I think that's crucial. Um, and, you know, bringing it back now to, you know, now using these meetings and, and moving faster, obviously some stuff happened in 2020, uh, <laughs> but it was, you know, it was like a, a fast moving, it was a fast moving boom, boom, boom. And I'm a, I'm of the belief that that's always the biggest opportunity always. And I saw that I'm like, let's put the pedal to the metal because everyone else is going to turn away. And when there's chaos is opportunity, yeah. but you know, it's, it's kind of contradictory. I feel to, hey, I've got these quarterly goals. How did, how did you all address it with your clients and how did you take advantage of it in the context of EOS? Um, so a couple of things. One was um, when there's so much uncertainty, thinking about what your 10 year target is um, doesn't hold as much water, right? It's, it's like, let's dial back and, and let's try to just still think three to five years out. Um, one year out, just let's dial it in, um, was one of the first things. Um, and for some people, even as you said, doing, we, some people changed their meeting pulse to daily, like a daily check-in, um, because they weren't in the office anymore. They were working from home. They might've been, there's lots of struggles with, you know, our children coming in and out, um, all the things that have come up. So dialing back so you could be more realistic about what expectations could be, and then still 
moving forward, still having rocks, still doing to do, still solving issues. What's the issue? COVID, what's the issue? Work from home, what's the issue? The PPPs, what's the, whatever it is, um, not putting your head in the sand um, and still doing that. I think um, the other thing was we say regularly um, this idea of being open and honest. Mm -hmm. And I think in that all of 2020 couldn't be more real. Like if you were not addressing your issues and being open and honest about what you were actually able to perform and how you were working with your team, um, I think teams suffer more when they don't address that as a, as a real issue. My name is Gino Wickman. I decided that I want to start to put great video content out to the world. And so the goal was one great video every week. And, and so I was introduced to Ian and, and that's what brought me into this video world and got me embracing this video world and having a great strategy around putting videos out to the world. Cause there's so much more than just shooting a video. And so the way that he positions those videos, optimizes those videos, He's done a great job. Oh yeah, completely. And I, I agree. And it's it's easy for people to think nothing's wrong or to start wondering what's wrong. And same thing with in your marketing and communication, correct? Right. Yes. And, um, in it, I think um, I love doing core value work. I think it's one of the most spectacular um, ways to connect with a team and really see how they gel together. Um, it's like uh, every company has is a snowflake when it comes to their core values because every culture is different. And um, being able to use that as their marketing message to talk about what they were doing to address um, their business in light of all this uncertainty uh, was pretty important, I think. Um, for sure, sales and metrics might need needed to be adjusted, but um, not for every client that I had. For some people, it was um, it was they had more than what they knew what to do with. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was it was a big shift for uh, both directions for a lot of people. Absolutely, absolutely, and being able to also be. I think there was a lot more people had to pay attention to their messaging, right? Like how can they still, how can they come across as authentic? I think it became very apparent companies that weren't being authentic and just looking at the bottom line and just, you know, we, we have to go farther and faster. Um, and I was listening to a podcast yesterday, Dare to Lead, Brene Brown was interviewing um, Simon Sinek on his book, Infinite Games. And this concept of, um, no, you actually need to go slower and get closer. And for me, slower, I think, is dialing back and thinking of that time frame um, and be more intentional. Yeah. Oh, I. I mean, exactly. In those moments, you got to listen more. You, you have to, you know, try and serve more. I think so many people did did the opposite, and <laughs> I saw it. And I, you know, and but the people that dialed it in. It was interesting because I, when we did the giants of video summits it, prior to that, the people, cause it was every, it, a lot of it was uh, what's working now. And a lot of it was what worked right at, before the, the everything happened up until, and the big thing I heard from people was the personalization of content, really reaching out. And the people that were succeeding spent the time to text, to call, to make videos for individual people. Mm -hmm. And did you see the same thing happening? Yes, I, I would do a, um, I was doing a weekly uh, email to all of my clients to just share where I was at and, and be vulnerable. You know, like if I can, like, I had some dark, like my Mondays, my, I would seriously case of the Mondays, um, every Monday when you would kind of get back into the boat and what would you be doing to get out of it? How are you connecting with the team? How are you moving your body? Um, you know, I think when we separate are what we have as expectations for work versus you're in your home, you are, you still want to move your body, you want to eat well, you want to connect with your family. And um, we're not, those are not silos. And, and I think more than ever, 2020 showed us that there's a lot of crossover and 
and ways that we are able to have strategies to share with each other, those would be the strategies that I would share on a, on a weekly basis um, to connect and send text messages like, how are you doing? How's your team doing? What's, what kinds of things are you guys employing to um, get better? And, and the ones that I think were connecting on a more regular basis, you know, doing the fun videos where they're like tossing a coffee mug from one, you know, the Brady Bunch Zoom gallery um, to the next or, you know, finding ways to, to make it more fun, you know, showing, um, I think uh, I have a firm that sent a box of what the heck is EOS book with some um, herbs and immunity boosters and um, just stuff to keep people healthy. Love it. Yeah. And, it, and realizing, like you said, that people are people right? <laughs> and, 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 and we have this entire day and we're, t we're 20 different people throughout the day and playing 20 different roles. Um, and, and so now obviously things have shifted, things have settled for a lot of companies. Where do you see, you know, marketing for your business and for, you know, your client's business going in 2021 and how can they take advantage of it, especially in the context of EOS? I think getting really clear on what they want their vision to be this year. I think that that some people honestly just put pause on what their vision might be. Like, I, I'm not sure. I'm just trying to like fire, you know, shoot from the hip and put out fires and deal with what is right now. I think that it's still important to have that long goal, work backwards and um, check in with what is your vision? What are, who are you at your core and how do you want to show up for people? Um, I really enjoy the connection with, with my clients and being able to have a conversation and, and listen to their issues. Um, that's important for me. And I think that for, and so what I would say to any client is listen to your team, listen to what's going on. Um, I love, I feel like uh, that the idea of these listening tours that I hear a lot of uh, that seems to be more of a buzzword or something, but um, I like it. I like the idea of a listening tour. Like we don't need to always be talking and delegating. I think that a lot can be um, solved by listening. Oh, it's it's the, one of the most important tools out there. And what's crazy is people are doing so much more talking and we have so much more ability to listen, but we're just doing less of it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and the I love your how you do the video marketing because I I think that's shown up in awesome ways too. You know I'm I very much appreciate when someone drops me a um, like an audio text or Marco Polo. My girlfriends and I are constantly sending videos to each other, and um, I think that for business that that's a fun way to connect too. Yeah, it's so easy to do, and uh, there's so many different levels of it. Awesome. And, you know, it, do you have one thing that you are absolutely going to focus on in your marketing in 2021? For me, one thing that I'm absolutely going to focus on in my marketing is um, I had paused my weekly emails, but I had put it on my um, vision for this year to do more um, like a surprise video or a surprise audio text because I do a lot of just sending like a text or an email but getting more creative myself in that um for some reason and even maybe you uh being here on the podcast today there's this shyness that I feel around um just doing a video I I don't mind posting a photo I don't mind write I love writing um but something about that blinking red light that's staring at me and that I'm going to do it. So I, I think it's great what you're doing. Um, and it pushes me to, to maybe drop one on LinkedIn or to my clients. Well, if you're gonna, well, we'll all follow you on LinkedIn. We'll put a LinkedIn to, on in your, uh, in the show notes. Thanks. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to connect with Andrea which I appreciate because I, I get frustrated when I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, Andrea, Andrea. Um, and yeah, well, well, there was Andrea on 90210 with 
Ian. Yeah, there so, we go. His name, what, what was his name on? Yeah, his name. What Steve. Was his name? It was Steve on the show because people called, started calling me Steve because of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so let's, I want to talk a little bit about, about, you know, just recap how EOS works from your standpoint, because I know you have a slide. I want you to show a little bit in case you folks aren't implementing EOS. I highly suggest looking into it, whatever size business you are, the earlier you get started, the better. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'll share, I'll share this slide with you. Can you see it, Ian? Yes, I can. Um, Thank you. So this is the EOS model, which really just um, stems from the idea that all entrepreneurs and business leaders, no matter what industry you're in, we're always wrestling with that. 136 issues at the same time. And to the extent that we can um, really get down to the root cause, oftentimes it's just a symptom of not being able to strengthen one of these six key elements. So being able to get into um, defining, and I mentioned early already, strengthening the people component, um, making sure you have the right people and the right seats. So you've identified the structure of your business. You have an accountability chart We've identified the roles for each of those functions. And then after the structure has been identified, you go around and, and see, do people get it, want it, and have the capacity for it? And that's how you have the right person in the right seat. Always talking again about core values and making sure that they are a right fit. Um, the vision component is making sure that everyone's aligned with where you're going and how you're gonna get there. So um, in doing that, we I help businesses identify their core values, their core focus, where they're headed five to 30 years from now. Um, what is their marketing strategy at a high level? What's their three-year picture? Like, can they see it in their mind's eye where they wanna go three years from now? Um, and working backward then, what is their one-year plan? What are, what are the key goals for 2021? and what's then the quarterly objectives and the issues. The data component, that one that so often we, we skip, right? And, and just operate off the gut if you're classic visionary, um, but really holding yourselves accountable to the scorecard, the metrics, um, what is it that's, what are those weekly activities that's really moving your business in the direction to fulfill its vision and achieve success? Even in doing that, this people, vision, and data component you're strengthening these, it really highlights some impurities. Um, it's like cleaning a window, right? You, you strengthen it and you're like, oh, there's a lot of ugly we created and we didn't even know about it. Um, so the issues component is just that an art form of getting good at identifying what's the root cause. How can we get to a solve for the greater good of the company and, and keep our business moving in the right direction? The process component is about getting that handful of core processes and documenting the key steps. So making sure that anybody that's coming on board really is aware of what it is. And I would say in 2020, um, processes were key, right? I mean, there's a lot of shifts that happened for companies. So finding a way that you can get information out there quickly. So we're not writing like a 700 page manual on it, just taking a 2080 approach to make sure everyone's filled in and knows what they're doing and can be assessed against it. It makes it so much more fun and profitable and scalable for businesses. Um, lastly, traction, um, no coincidence since I'm the opposite of vision here, but traction is where you're able to instill that discipline and accountability. So you know, wherever you are going in your, like when you're back in the office or on Zoom or however you meet with your teams, you are aware that what they're doing on a daily basis is helping to achieve the objective of the, the whole company of achieving that vision. So getting traction, strengthening these six key components, it's really um, a journey that I love taking with clients. Love it. And yeah, it's, I mean, these are all crucial parts and I know it sounds high level, but having a system for going through these things, especially I think the core values is one of those things. I'm amazed by how few business, they tell me they have their core values, but they don't have it identified. Right. And it's, it's, and it's a game changer if they're done properly, done incorrectly too, they, they're not helpful. No, so, not. Yeah. I, and, um, and, you know, if you're improving your marketing, you should have marketing processes, not just for marketing for, yeah. I mean, it, right. Okay. And you should have process for hiring people. 
and and <laughs> it's amazing yeah, to me. What is your HR process? What's your you know process for onboarding? What might be your um, sales process? Your customer retention? Um, what is your um, finance process? All of it. I mean, when you go through um, each department, might have um, a couple processes and. At the very least, um, making sure that there is a, a marketing process, right? If there's a process to make sure that you are creating awareness about your brand and bringing people in the door, um, then then you can start to say, okay, from there, then what's my operating process? How am I going to deliver this product or service to to the clients and make sure that they're happy? Um, and then if you're thinking of any financial processes, like how do I make sure the lights stay on <laughs> and people are getting paid? So um, even just thinking of those core functions um, in any business, it can help to start to identify what key processes you might need. So important. And so speaking of process, tell us about the process of working with you. So to work with me, um, it's a free 90 minute meeting. You can do that. You can drop me a LinkedIn message. You can, um, that you'll be sharing right at the end or, um, shoot me a, just find me, shoot me a message. Um, I'm happy to have any conversation about, are you the right target fit for EOS? Are you at the right stage to do it? Um, after 90 minutes, um, we spend the first three times together building a foundational um, understanding of what the tools are. So it's all time, space, learning. We start first with the structure, the most important thing. Um, what's the right structure for your business? Um, who are the people that are going to be on your leadership team. Um, let's set up some rocks for the next 90 days so we can start to see how we're um, going to move forward and get, achieve some success. I, um, I have all clients start their L10 meeting the very next week. So getting in the habit, um, set it in your calendar, same time, same date, same people till death do you part. Um, no exceptions, like even dentist appointments. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was late because my No, I'm kidding because that would be something that we would regularly. It's easy to um like for whatever reason you put your client first before your team. Um, like, oh well, I, I can close the sale, so I can't do the L10 meeting this week. And um eventually uh, more like as you gain some maturity in EOS, you start to understand that you no, know, those those 90 minutes are, are precious, are precious to you. So um, we start to build some foundational learnings there in those first three, three sessions together. And then from there, it's really just execution. We meet quarterly. Um, I do a two day annuals, which are always so much fun. Lots of team health discovery there. And yeah, really EOS objective is to help businesses um, get alignment around their vision and still discipline and accountability so they can have traction and get healthy as a team and organization. Love it. And uh, we will put a link to your websites, which is uh, greatpursuitsmn.com, correct? correct. Mm -hmm. And um, we can, obviously they can Google you. We'll put links in the show notes to everything, um, but that's a great offer. If you're not running an EOS or if you're having trouble with EOS, yeah. You know, check out Andrea, totally. get it going. And, and, and uh, mention the podcast, I'll mail you a book. Mail you a book. Awesome. That's very generous. Well, Andrea, thank you so much for being on the Garlic Marketing Show. So wonderful to be on it. Thank you. And thank you all for listening. Make sure to make plans for your marketing. Make sure to have some sort of business systems, business processes. And if you're thinking about EOS, check out Andrea. But this has been Ian Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show.